Welcome to my channel guys. Today is another day for tipsy movie reviews which is a series on my channel where I am sipping on my little drink while reviewing a really ridiculous or really fucked up movie and today's video I feel like the movie we're talking about, well movies in plural, are both ridiculous and fucked up at the same time so here goes my little glass i still gotta open my wine bottle i really should have done that before i started this video but for whatever reason i felt like it would be more dramatic if i open it on camera now where i think about it it's nothing dramatic about that at all but anyways the movie we're talking about today or well, movies are red room and its sequel red room 2 Red Room came out in 1999 right. and Red Room 2 in uh, 2000. And basically, this is a Japanese Wii movie, which means direct to video movie, both directed by Daisuke Yamanochi, who is a director that apparently, from what I gather, has started his career making porn or pink films and then he graduated to like horror but even his horror movies kind of sort of i'm sorry about opening wine vials by the way don't nobody clown me in the comments for it um apparently even his horror movies contain like certain, certain elements in them from his other genre films so red room and red room 2 are both such horror movies Ta -da. so yeah so let's start with the first red room movie although technically both movies have the exact um same concept the only thing that changes between the first movie and the sequel are the characters so the concept for both red room movies is basically like a parody or like a very extreme and sick version of reality tv show competitions in that that four strangers four down on their luck strangers in desperate need of some cash get together to play a game of king that i guess is being run by some type of a mysterious um corporation that preys on these people in need for money the rules of the game are very simple four players locked together in a room where they're given a deck of cards well not really a deck of cards four cards in total and the cards are being shuffled and distributed to each player so three of the cards contain numbers from one to three and the fourth card has a crown symbol on it so whichever person picks out the crown the crown symbol becomes the king for that round and the king gets to give the other three people an order that they have to carry out or get disqualified and to be a little more specific by giving them an order i mean it's like basically an order for them to like torture each other the king would pick the kind of torture that they have to they do also has to pick which person is going to be torturing whom and they have to follow the rules exactly and do it exactly in the way that king says or they will be disqualified and forfeit the money so once that's carried out whoever had to torture who once they got through with it they would reshuffle the cards and pull again and the next person will become king and pick whoever is torturing who now the game will go on like that until there's only one player left the other three have either been disqualified or they now if it was like a more over serious psychological thriller i guess it had the potential to like truly show us the darkness that this kind of a game would bring in a person which make no uh doubts about it those movies definitely do show it but in a way that is more shock value oriented and more to show you some sick shit going on than in a way to give you like some deep or profound idea about it they basically just want to show you some sick shit right which is fine you know that's what we watch movies like that i feel like but anyways if it was some type of a serious movie you know they would have went about it in a much clever or refined way but how the red rooms movies approach this subject is in a way that is both 
like really fucked up and also really ridiculous because a lot of those tortures that the contestants subject each other to as messed up as those are they also really stupid and like almost childish like stuff so let's start with the first Red Room movie now, shall we? Like I said, the only difference between the first movie and the sequel. different characters in them, but both are very similarly structured and have basically like the same things happening all in all. So the characters in the first movie are like this married couple called Aizawa and Masako. Aizawa being an extremely meek man who is completely dominated by his wife Masako, who is kind of like a bully. And I guess um, the reason they have to play this game is something went wrong, I think, with like the business they had, like some catering business or some shit like that. And they owe money to Yakuza now all of a sudden said something along those lines for them then the next contestant in the in a game is a 17 year old high school student named hiromi who is like this very sociopathic like character i would say this girl is like she gives no fucks and she will do whatever it takes to win this game and fuck whoever she needs to fuck over and then there is also a woman named kanako who seems from the beginning the beginning of the game as like a quiet woman almost like a meek woman she states in her introduction to the game that she does not mind degrading herself for money though so she's down for everything also so once the game starts it starts fairly mild with people like asking each other to do mild stuff and then progressively it escalates to them asking contestants to perform more and more sick or shit but like i said it all has like a certain like almost childish vibe. It was one of the first um, tasks that one of the kings asked the other contestants to do is for one contestant to strap the other contestant to a chair and spin them around in circles for five minutes straight. Now, of course that's fucked up. That will make you really sick. Frankly, if that was me right there, I probably would have quit because... I don't like vomiting and I know that if I was spun around in a circle for even a minute... I would vomit my guts out and I wouldn't want that. So I'll be like, no, I quit. But I mean, like, like I said, even though it's a really fucked up shit to do to somebody, it also has like a, almost like a childish vibe to it. It just seems like such a stupid now, thing. The person that wins King in the next round, they ask uh, one of the contestants to take a blow dryer. There's various props, by the way, available for them to, like, torture each other with, including, like, uh, blow dryers, toothbrushes, duct tape, light bulbs, screwdrivers, shit what? like that. So the king tells one of the contestants to stick a blow dryer in the next contestant's mouth and turn it on for three minutes. Again, definitely some sick shit to do, but has, like, a, I don't know, like, a certain childish vibe to it or something. And that's how a lot of the tortures that they perform on each other go in the beginning of the movie it's fucked up it's sick but it's always so kind of like really really stupid right but like i said things progressively escalate eventually we get to the point where they do the most messed up shit in that whole competition at least in my opinion, I thought that was the most fucked up shit that the contestants were asked to do when uh, one of the contestants is being told to sit without moving or speaking and the other contestant gets to do like whatever they want to them for five minutes straight and the person that is being done to, they cannot object or move in, or to defend themselves. And of course, of course. Of course, the contestant that has to sit without moving has to be a female contestant and the one that is being told to do whatever they want with them is a male contestant. And you can kind of guess where that would go from there. Well, actually not quite because this guy turns out to be a lot sicker in the head than you would give him credit for. I'll give you a little hint. At some point, he reaches for a light bulb. And one of the most disturbing and wild things about the first Red Room movie is honestly the opening scene that begins with like the most disgusting kissing scene I've ever seen and like the longest kissing scene I've ever seen in any movie ever and it honestly looks grosser than any gore 
that you would ever see in any movie ever. It is that fucking disgusting. And it also has like sound effects that accompany it that is like, oh, like fucking nails on a cello board to your ears. It's so disgusting to look at and to listen to. I almost to. turn off the movie right then and there. Not even gonna lie. Like it fucking traumatized me. Once it got past that though, the movie itself, it was weirdly entertaining in a really fucked up kind of way it's kind of like a train wreck it's hard to look away from it and it has a surprising amount of twists and turns in it too i gotta say like it has a few surprises in there about the identity of one of the characters for example um it's unexpected it's honestly completely unnecessary i don't think it brought much to the movie and the way that it was revealed was extremely disgusting. <laughs> but it definitely manages to get your attention because it comes out of nowhere and completely unexpected. So here's that. So these movies are pretty entertaining and they're fairly fast-paced, you know. Like, um, it's one of those movies that jump straight to the point. The only thing that I really hated about both movies is that both movies have way too many flashbacks. Both movies basically structured in the exact same way, where we're shown the contestants shuffle cards, somebody become kings, tells the other ones how to torture each other, they will carry on with that torture, and then right before they would move on to the next shuffling of cards and the next task, they would do that thing where the movie flashes back to a few minutes before the game started where all four of them were sitting together in like this waiting room and having conversations with each other me like that made the movie drag a little bit and i would have rather they just showed us the actual story instead of keep going back to those flashbacks anyway the first red room movie was pretty wild pretty sick pretty disgusting kind of ridiculous too like i said i would give it a rating of six out of ten I mean, it's trashy as hell, and it's disgusting, but it is kind of entertaining. It definitely does keep your interest, and it keeps you watching. And it definitely gave me the vibes like it was like a parody or like a really sick and twisted version of like a reality TV show competitions. You know, those competitions where people have to degrade themselves competing for money prize. I definitely felt like Red Room movies were a version of that. Now moving on to the second Red Room movie. The contestants in that one are a girl named Mitsuko, who is like this like this religious freak type of a person. A man named Hirosama, who is a middle-aged divorced man who is extremely wild and disgusting in personality and very perverted. A kind of don't give a fuck attitude having Hideyuki. You don't even know at first why he's even there because he claims that he does not need the money and he don't even care about this game. He's just he's there just because. And then there is also a girl named Kyoko who apparently has played this game three times before and has won this game three times before. So she's like a veteran and three times champion and she just comes there like, I'm about to murder you all in this game. <laughs> she just comes there with a complete I don't give a fuck attitude. But different from the dude that's there, like, I don't even care about this game or the money. She comes there with a kind of I don't give a fuck attitude. Like, I will do whatever it takes to win this game. Whatever disgusting task you ask me to do, I will do it. Whatever torture you put on me, I will endure it and I won't even fucking blink. Like, seriously, she's not even above drinking a huge bowl of somebody else's vomit. That's how serious this girl is, apparently. So, this movie I did not like as much as the first one. Because it felt very repetitive to me and I didn't feel at all original. At least the first one it had some type of originality to it. This one had none. They start the movie with recap scenes from the first movie, first of all. Which I think is very lazy. And then they literally reuse some of the stuff that happens in the first movie. Like, I understand that if the formula worked for you all to the in the first movie, then you kind of want to follow through with the same formula in the second movie. But to blatantly, like, recreate certain scenes from the first movie... In this one is just fucking lazy. For one thing, like the dreaded light bulb from the first movie makes its appearance in this one as well. 
Although this time it's used in a way that is just stupid. Not that it wasn't stupid in the first movie, but at least in the first movie it was also so fucking sick that it got your attention even if it was stupid. In this one it's just... just why? And then the challenges in part 2 also start as something really dumb even if pretty fucked up. Like one of the first tasks that the king gives is for one contestant to stick a toothbrush up another one's nose for i believe three or five minutes straight and that thing is absolutely fucking ridiculous because the amount of fake blood that gushes out of that guy's nose was so crazy and the blood looks so fucking fake also they literally redo the f same thing that happened in the first movie where um the king tells one of the contestants to sit still and not move and not talk while the other one gets to do whatever they want with them then it basically goes in a very similar direction although i would admit that it definitely has a even sicker outcome at the end of it than it was in the first movie all i gotta say is if you are one of those like uh pro-life people you might want to close your eyes or some shit during that scene or whatever will help you deal with it it does have like a really sick fucking out and also just like in the first red room movie in this one there is a unexpected, although I don't know how unexpected that was, um, revelation about the identity of one of the characters. But if in the first one, it was just like really wacky and like really stupid and over the top and disgusting. And this one is just straight up silly. And it pushes the movie in like this really bad sci-fi territory. So yeah, the second Red Room movie to me is a 4 out of 10. So thank you guys for watching. If you had seen the Red Room movies 1 or 2 or both, then, then definitely let me know what did you guys think about those in the comments. Let me know in the comments also what are your favorite horror movies inspired by reality show competition. And what other movies I should review on a tipsy reviews series on my channel in the future and if you're new here and i enjoyed my reviews so far then then definitely go on ahead and give this video a like subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so that you wouldn't miss any future videos and i will see you in the next one okay bye